friends, it's Cassie. Welcome back for another Brutus Monroe video. Today I'm going to be making a slimline card and we're going to be doing some watercoloring. But let's talk about the products we're going to be using. This first product is called Pumpkin Faces. It's one of my favorite Halloween sets from Brutus Monroe. No, there aren't any sentiments, but that's why I grabbed in Super Sentimental, which just seems to pair perfectly with this stamp set. Uh, I'm going to be using the Love Your Face. I know in the past I've used Miss Your Face, and it's just perfect for the little pumpkin faces. We're also going to be using some aqua pigments. This is the new fall line. We've got Cider, Auburn, Acorn, and Hunter. Uh, Gilded isn't new, and I actually don't end up using it, but we do have brass as well, so we're going to use that. I have a piece of watercolor cardstock that I have cut down to three and a half inches by eight and a half inches, and I have staggered three of my pumpkins. I'm going to heat emboss those, so I have put down some magic powder bag, and I'm going to ink those up using some embossing ink. So you're not really going to be able to see it, um, but I stamped that down, and we'll stamp it a couple times just to make sure that I have it stamped well. That's the, that's the rough part about stamping with embossing ink. It, you can't see it. So now I'm going to grab out some Raven Detail uh, embossing powder. So this is an ultra fine embossing powder. And yeah, you'll notice that I've got some of the powder right in the middle of the pumpkin, but it's not a big deal. I can just sweep that away with a dry brush and then just do that for all those centers. Uh, you know, that's that keeping that in mind, that's why it's kind of important that if you're going to stamp it in like a solid color that you, when you're actually doing the stamping, that you might rub your finger around the image, um, just where the line is rather than pressing right down in the center. So when you're doing clear embossing, it's or not clear embossing, but embossing, it's not that big of a deal. You can sweep it away, but just a heads up for that. All right, so I did have those staggered, and the reason I wanted to do that is because I am going to try and make this almost like a um, one layer card. So I'm stamping these now just using some Raven Detail ink onto some masking paper, and then I'm going to cut these masks out. My trick with cutting out a mask is to cut right on the line. If you cut out like on the outside of the line or right on the outside, you're going to end up having some ghosting, so I try to cut like right on that black line. And so then I'll peel off the release paper on this masking paper. And then I'll just stick that down on top of the pumpkin. And then we're going to do that for the other two pumpkins as well. The reason we are putting it on these is because I want these pumpkins to be in the front. So whatever you want to be in the front is what you have to stamp first and then you mask. And now I'll grab out the other pumpkins that I want to use and I will put those down on top of my paper. And these ones will be in the back. So yes, they're going to overlap, but you will only see that on the mask. I'll close the door of my Misty and once again use the magic powder bag, sweep away any excess, and then I will ink these up with that embossing ink once again. Definitely going to do it again. And you know, I do it twice, not only because I can't see the first one, but also because this is watercolor paper and I want to make sure that I have that impression because watercolor paper is typically it has some texture to it. So then I'll cover that once again. I do have some of the powder sticking to places that I don't want it to, like obviously in the center of those pumpkins, but wherever that's at, I can sweep that away with a dry brush. And to be honest with you, it really doesn't bother me if there's too much of that sticking around simply because I considered splattering it with some black ink anyway. So we heat emboss those, and now we're going to peel away the masks, and you'll see the magic of the mask that those pumpkins are now in the front. I'm going to hang on to those masks because they're still in really good condition. So I'll just stick those to the front of my stamp sheet. But yeah, there we have this whole line of pumpkins. The next thing I need to do is stamp their little faces. And I don't have to worry about masking any of these off because they're not going to overlap each other. So I'm just going to stick down all the little faces that I want, do the magic powder bag again, and then once again stamp down my faces using some embossing ink. And then one more time, we'll cover that with that Raven embossing powder. And again, we'll have a little bit stick into places we don't want it to, but we can do some cleanup. At the end of the day, I am super stoked. And I love that there are so many pumpkins and so many different faces in this stamp set. You could have just some endless possibilities for faces of pumpkins. I'm tacking down my panel to just a, a clipboard. This clipboard was from the dollar store. And I'm using some painter's tape to do so. 
That way it's going to leave like a nice little white border. I'm trying to make sure that it's fairly even around the side that I stick it down so it's not wonky. This one I do make a little thicker because I am going to trim it down, but I do like the idea of the white border. And now we'll put our ink or our, our aqua pigments down onto our glass mat and I'm going to use some clear water to just stick down first. I'm using a number four paintbrush and I do have this sped up about four times, but the first color that I put down is the cider color. So I'm just going to put that down. I've said this before, when you're watercoloring, watercolor works in layers. That's the best way to do it if you want any sort of dimension in your whatever it is you're painting. I'm kind of letting the water do the work, which is why I tried to put down the clear, clean, clear water first. And then once that's down, while it's still a little damp, I'm going to bring in the auburn color. And I'm just going to paint that around the edges. It's really harsh right at this point, but then I can bring in the cider color again and I can blend that out just a little bit so it'll leave just the edges having that deeper orange color and these two colors mix so well together. Put a little bit more on my glass mat and then we'll move on to the next pumpkin using that same process and like I said it can be pretty harsh but I really just want the glow to be in the center and you'll notice I'm also sort of bringing down the pumpkin lines where there would be some indention in the pumpkin just to add a little bit more dimension to that. I did use the auburn color on the insides of the pumpkin, but I end up not liking that, so I'm gonna change that later. And uh, it's pretty easy to do. If you find that you have put down too much color, you can always take a dry brush, you know, wipe up your dry, dry brush. So here I wasn't real happy with that, so I'm gonna clean that off a little bit and just kind of turn my paintbrush and that'll pick up some of that paint but I'm having so much fun doing this painting. And this is just one way to use the aqua pigments. I'll show you later on. Obviously you can splatter this, it's great. And the aqua pigments are basically a liquid watercolor, which is super fun. And they come in really big jars, so you're gonna have it for quite a while. All right, I'm happy with that. So now we're going to do the stems. We're using the acorn color. And again, I'm gonna do this in layers, so I'm, this one was already partially dry, but the other ones weren't, so you really couldn't see the second layer that I did. So I'm going to bring in my heat tool, also because I'm a little bit impatient. And that'll dry the paint, obviously, and then I can come in with that second layer, which will add a little bit more depth. I've brought in the Hunter color, which is another new one from the fall line. And I'm just going to paint down like some grass. It's obviously a very thin layer of that. And my next step is to bring in some colors that I didn't show earlier. I brought in violet, and my first mistake here was that I slapped down the color first, and so at this point I decided to bring in my flat brush and put a wash of water at the very top. I didn't bring it all the way down to the stems, so this way when I paint, I can bring that color up into where I had put the water and it will bleed up into the upper portion. And then I'm going to bring in another color, this is blue violet, and I'm going to bring that down into the uh, the violet color and it's it's not perfect that's kind of okay with me because I'm going to do some splatter and honestly folks splatter can fix a lot of things <laughs> uh, not that I just hated this but it wasn't like a perfect blend and that's okay so again this is why I'm going to do some splatter I'm going to dry this before I do any of my splatter so I've got this on my lowest setting just to dry that up and then when that's dry enough I'll take my paintbrush and then I'll just splatter that color up on the upper portion and then dry that a little bit more before I add the next layer of my hunter green at the very bottom. And then I'll splatter some of the brass color at the top. And then I also decide to bring some of that brass into the stems. So I love that. And it's at this point that I decide that I want to use the white gel pen on their eyes, just because I really did not like how dark those were. I mean, your pumpkin would probably be glowing on the inside, right? So we're going to add some white there. And then now I can peel away the painter's tape to kind of reveal the border that I have. And I'm pretty happy with most of it, So I am, but I am going to trim down some of it. So I'll just trim down that far edge, and then I'll trim a tiny bit off the top and a tiny bit off of the bottom. And this way, when I layer it onto my card base, which is one of the pre-cut slimline bases that 
Brutus Monroe carries in the store. So this is the inside of my base. I'm just stamping using some Traffic Cone ink by Simon Hurley. And I'm just stamping the, you know, different faces. It's okay that they overlap, and to me it really doesn't bother me that they're kind of hanging off the bottom too. I really don't care. So we'll stamp one more on the far right-hand side, so that way we've got three little pumpkins on the inside. And this is where I noticed that mostly doing the stamping, like just with a block, you don't have that much of an issue with the bigger pumpkins having some of that residue in the center. Now for the sentiment, I'm going to grab out the Super Sentimental stamp set, like I mentioned earlier, and we're going to stamp that with that Raven Detail ink. The one I have grabbed for the inside is You're My Favorite, because the, the uh, stamp for the outside I thought was, was perfect. So I'm using the Love Your Face. I have a scrap of some Raven cardstock. I put my magic powder bag on that again because we're going to do some embossing with our gilded embossing powder, which is a beautiful gold embossing powder. We'll ink up our sentiment with the embossing ink. And then I'm, I am living dangerously here, folks. I am just pouring that onto that piece and funneling it back into my container. This is a risk because I could have gotten it all over my glass mat. I'm telling you, sometimes I'm just, uh, I'm lazy. <laughs> Thankfully, this time it worked out, but it doesn't always work out. <laughs> And then I'll trim down my sentiment and I'm going to put a tiny bit of a flag banner edge on that lower portion. I do that by snipping into the center and then bringing the edges to it. And then we're going to attach that down with just some liquid glue. I thought that this was a good place. It was right above that smallest little pumpkin. And then we'll use that same liquid glue to adhere down our panel. There wasn't a lot of warping, which is nice considering I did watercolor this. And then I'm going to attach that down to my card base. There will be a little bit of hangover from the black cardstock, so I'm just going to trim that excess off. And then that is it, folks. That's going to finish off our fun little slimline Halloween card. So I would love to know what you think. Um, yeah, if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, I will see you very soon in another video. Bye, everybody.